Haven't you recently sat in front of your TV and gotten into the presidential debate? Was it frustrating, legendary, unusual, or groundbreaking? Well, these debates have evolved significantly over the years, shaping the way we choose our leaders. Some were more interesting than others. This is All Request History Special Edition, the history of U.S. presidential debates. Before televised debates, political discourse was dominated by written word and radio broadcasts. We go back to 1858 for what could be the first political debate in Alton, Illinois, between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas. Although this was for a Senate seat, it did set the stage for future presidential debates. The forum took shape over years and offered citizens a chance to hear the ideas and the platforms of political elected officials. Political debates became a regular forum preceding most any public election. Most candidates took advantage of this forum using the public green, which became referred to as the stump speech. Use of the city hall meeting rooms as a gathering place is where we got the term town hall forum. And of course, the common use of the rail system to travel from town to town to deliver your political message became known as the whistle stop tour. After the radio became so popular that there was at least one in every home, it became the most popular forum for political debates. The Communications Act of 1934 required American broadcast companies to offer all candidates running for public office equal airtime to deliver their message to the American public. The popularity of television during the 1960s was the perfect opportunity for presidential candidates to speak to millions of people and for the first time, the American public could see candidates stand beside their opponents, and present their policies, personalities, and vision for the future. And voters had more than just their message. Now they were influenced by body English, presentation, and the look in the eyes of the candidate as they spoke. The first of the modern presidential TV debates began in 1960 with the historic televised arguments between John F. Kennedy and Richard M. Nixon. The debate was viewed by close to 70 million Americans. Historians note that the younger, articulate, and more confident Kennedy won the election over Nixon because of the visual advantage brought on by the television broadcast. Lyndon Johnson became president after the tragic demise of JFK, and because polling showed Johnson winning by a landslide over Republican Barry Goldwater headed into the 64 election, that mathematically there was no chance that a televised debate would have changed the outcome. So there wasn't one. Now, there are no rules stating that an incumbent candidate must debate, and in 1968, Hubert Humphrey wanted a televised debate, but President Richard Nixon refused, likely because of the 1960 Kennedy debate was not really good for Nixon at all. Lucky for Nixon, his re-election in 1972 was similar to the 64 Johnson-Goldwater race. Nixon was far ahead in the polls, and there was no chance that a TV debate would have helped Democrat George McGovern. So after a 16-year status, debates did return in 1976. The showdown between Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter reinstated the tradition. Carter ultimately became president, and some say it was due to the notable moment when Ford made an incorrect statement about the Soviet Union occupying Eastern Europe, illustrating how debates could impact public perception and electoral outcomes. The 1980 debate between Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter was another pivotal moment. Reagan's famous line, there you go again, showcased his ability to connect with viewers through memorable one-liners. This added the popularity to the debates and became part of the next day water cooler gossip. Reagan became famous for his one-liners, so his burn on Walter Mondale in the 1984 presidential debate became headlines. When Mondale made a reference to Reagan being too old to run a second term, Reagan quipped, I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. In 1988, debates featured Michael Dukakis and George H.W. Bush. But the most memorable moment from that year would be from the vice presidential debates. Dan Quayle said he has as much experience as Jack Kennedy, and he was immediately put in place by Senator Lloyd Benson, with the now famous line, Senator, Senator you're, no you're no Jack Kennedy. The 1992 debates introduced a new format, the town hall meeting. Bill Clinton, George H.W. Bush, and Ross Perot engaged directly with voters, adding a personal touch to the debates. 
Although Perot might have gotten all the buzz with some of his crazy quotes and statements, it was Clinton's epithetic responses and humble persona that helped him connect with viewers on a deeper level. In 1997, Bill Clinton won re-election and served another four years, but the 96 debate with Bob Dole opened discussions about pretty typical political hot points like defense, budget, Medicare, pro-life versus pro-choice. But the most memorable moment might have been when Senator Bob Dole went off script to give the score of the baseball series playoffs in Atlanta. And by the way, the Braves were ahead of the Cardinals one to zip in the bottom of the second. After Clinton's two terms, we had two brand new candidates running for the 2001 presidential election, Al Gore and George H.W. son, George W. Bush. Remember, little George was not a Bush Jr., so people just learned to call him W to avoid confusion with the elder Bush. The most memorable debate moment between Gore and W. Bush would likely be from the stage at Washington University in St. Louis on October 17, 2000. When Gore disagreed with his opponent, he stood up to face Bush and not say anything with an imposing stance. It failed horribly as the shorter but stone-faced Bush stared him down and kept right on talking. Gore quickly returned to his seat and quietly sat back down. The 2005 re-election of was a bit of a landslide for George Bush as he had reached almost hero status for his handling of the country after the September 11th attacks in 2001. After establishing homeland security, Democrat Senator John Kerry had little chance to convince American voters that he had better policies in the 2004 debate. So Americans got four more years of W. Bush. Now two new candidates in the middle of the worst U.S. financial crisis since the Great Depression 2008, the debates between Barack Obama and John McCain were, of course, all about economic issues. Some claim it was McCain's strongest showing in his political career, but Obama's calm, wholesome, and articulate responses helped him project a presidential image, and his promise to bring the U.S. back to financial stability contributed to his historic victory. 2012 brought us President Barack Obama facing former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, the biggest focus at this time seemed to be foreign policy. According to most polls, Romney gave a much better impression and he left with the upper hand into the election. More than 67 million Americans watched the October 3rd debate from the University of Denver in Colorado, making it the most widely viewed presidential debate since 1980. In the election, Obama was the victor. The 2016 debates between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were among the most intense in history. Trump's unconventional style and Clinton's detailed policy knowledge highlighted a stark contrast in debating styles and strategies. A fact checker's nightmare, this throwdown included Clinton accusing Trump of racist behavior, illegal labor practice on Trump Tower, and his chauvinistic tendencies. Trump's rhetoric about Clinton's private email server debacle, her lack of results after being in politics for 30 years, and her questionable economic policies. As we know, Trump came out as the victor. Going into the 2020 debates, the country was dealing with a devastating global pandemic. Most U.S. citizens were divided on how it should be handled. Most U.S. citizens were divided on, well, every other issue as well. Everything from the economy to border patrolling, health care to gun control, and certainly front and center was the COVID-19 mask mandates. The fierce debate was between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Trump accused Biden of wearing an earpiece for live coaching and insisted his competitor had dementia and should be tested before the debate. Biden accused Trump of being associated with white supremacy groups and brought up his plans to defund the police. Some viewers were entertained, some were disgusted, and some were just plain confused. That now famous debate on September 20th from Cleveland, Ohio was watched by 73 million viewers. So here we are in 2024, another presidential election and more televised debates. What do you think? Were we better off just listening to candidates on the town green standing on a stump? Or should we just keep screaming at our 40-inch flat screen from the comfort of our own living room?